So I've been playing League of Legends for the first time in around seven or eight years over the last two months, and I found myself heavily invested, streaming it throughout the week. I'm currently Silver 2, and I have no cause to believe I won't keep climbing. Even though there's lots of improvements to be made to my gameplay, I am winning the majority of my matchups and winning the majority of my games now. Lately, I've noticed people talking in my Discord about struggling to find useful resources to help new players learn the game that are actually up to date. And given that I've just gone through that struggle myself and feel comfortable with the game now, I thought I might make a video covering some core concepts that help you win while also breaking down my own mistakes. Today I was playing ranked at my Silver 2 elo and we're taking a look at my Jace gameplay for our free matches. In these three games I face a Teemo, a Nasus and a Mordekaiser in the top lane. Each 1v1 has its own differences, some of them pretty huge, so I need to identify what my win conditions are for each 1v1. Starting with Teemo, he's squishy and fast, and his main ability is to stop auto attacks, which doesn't really affect me much as Jace if I play around it because I have a bunch of abilities to use during that window. Logically, I can assume I'm favoured in this matchup, so the goal should be to slow push the lane to assume control of the wave, making it hard for him to trade, poke whenever possible to warm him up for my all in, and then kill him and take plates, and once I've taken a couple plates and killed him maybe once, maybe twice, freeze the lane, deny all XP and CS, and put him heavily behind. Let's take a look at our encounters and see if I succeed in this win condition. As you can see in that clip in the background, I did beat the hell out of him at level 1 for some reason, he thought he could contest me. You can't jace is one of the strongest level one characters because he has two abilities at level one i almost get him maybe i could have even killed him if i flashed aggressively or positioned a little bit better but as you can see i've got complete control of the lane but then i push it more and i get the kill because it's right there in front of me just kidding for some reason i cancelled my killing blow auto attack i'm the worst while I internally and probably externally scream at myself, let's consider what this encounter means for me in the lane. I've got him to use his flash and he's also going to use his teleport so he's extremely vulnerable now, while he's low level especially, to a gank or just my 1v1. So I'm going to shove the wave into the tower, back and then begin my harass. This means the wave is going to be out from his tower after this, he might miss some last hits, he can't uh, freeze the wave because he's too low health to tank that many minions and I can come back with hopefully some items and some strength. In this regard, I've already achieved my first goal within the first like minute of our encounter, which is control the wave. He can't contest me in the 1v1 anymore, so it's time to begin poking him to warm him up for that all in. Jumping forward, we have that slow push built up. He's just returned to lane. We hit a nice empowered blast, and actually, that's enough harass to go all in. We fully commit, and he's done. The short CD of Ignite is really crazy. I had it well before he had flash again, at least 40 seconds. He's dead. His summoners are down. Let's secure goal free and take a massive slow push wave into his tower for plates. It seemed like, oh, with a wave that big, there isn't even anything he's going to do to be able to stop me from taking that second plate. But given my lack of vision between me and the river, I have no idea where the enemy jungler is. I can see my own jungler on the bottom side of blue, which means it's likely my enemy jungler is in top, so I'm vulnerable. So I don't risk it, and we back up. And sure enough, the enemy jungler hits the vision plant, showing me exactly where he is. So I ping that out for my team to take note of. Although, you know, it's silver, they probably didn't even notice. Another jump forward, Teemo pushes a large wave into my tower and I clean it up and repeat goal 1 by killing the melee minions and building up another slow push. But just as I get that going, Teemo decides to take an extended trade with me, which I have to admit confused me and made me kill him kind of sloppily, but whatever, he dies and my slow pushing wave starts to build up once again. Now, if Teemo did not have teleport at that time, I would have crushed this tower and gained a massive lead. But once again, I see my jungler is bot. I don't have vision, I'm hurt, so let's back. Returning to lane once more, I notice Teemo is missing. He appears in mid for an extended fight, which is, well, a huge risk for him. If it doesn't pay off, he loses two waves of CS and XP while I keep farming up even more. And in this case, his rotate does not go well and he stays way too long. Long enough, in fact, for me to take his tower all the way down to two plates. Now, each plate is worth 160 gold, which is a minion wave worth of gold, and he lets me take two. Talk about important, and he lets me have that for nothing. After this, it seems Teemo's aware of his mistake and makes a great attempt to hold me off his tower now. I'm farming up slowly at this point, gaining very little for a few minutes here. This is where I should have rotated and held mid or taken skull, warded the jungle, something. Each time I push in, I should have rotated to a nearby objective, then return for the next wave to push in. Instead, I waste my time, give the enemy a chance to recover or maybe even gank me, and this is a perfectly reasonable time for goal 3 as well. He can't contest me in the lane at all, Why 
why didn't I freeze the wave on my side of the lane now? If there's no objectives that are free, why am I not at least starving Teemo of CS and XP? Why am I letting him farm up? Eventually, I do take this tower because I'm just stronger than him, opening up the map greatly. This allows me to rotate around the map a lot more freely because it's going to take Teemo a lot more time to push the wave back out from his tier 2 compared to his tier 1. And the laning phase is pretty much over and I've won my lane. So the takeaway here is that I could have been winning from my team too, rather than just myself. Take that vision into the jungle, help mid, go take mid tower, something. I noticed that I feel the need to take tier 1 tower before I actually start rotating for ganks mid, jungle, or whatever objective. And I should be looking for these opportunities more, you know, when they're available, not just after I've killed their tower. That's match 1, let's move to match 2 versus Nasus. So here's what I know, he's going to be a huge problem post level 6 and an easy kill before that, so let's work out our goals, our, our win potential. So first is to set up a slow push to control the lane and prevent him from trading right at the beginning of the game and then kill him once or twice before level six obviously to kill him and gain gold and get an advantage finally we want to freeze the way post level six at my tower so he has a hard time farming and i'm a lot safer from his 1v1 and strength and also gank potential and because he's going to be at my tower that makes him very vulnerable to ganks as well I'm actually going to be able to cover this second match so much faster because I completely messed it up. I bully him extremely hard right from the start and attempt an all-in, and I miss that kill barely. It's heartbreaking. I put him to 1 HP and then he flashes out just as I could have killed him. Basically, I should have flashed immediately or expected his flash. Position, died the tower. He gets away on 1 HP and it's a really important kill and I could have flash killed him. That's my fault. On the bright side, I've made him use both teleport and flash, he's super vulnerable, so I do call for a gank, I ping assist me, I let my jungle know that he doesn't have these abilities, I even write it out for him that he doesn't have flash and he doesn't have teleport. Unfortunately, my jungle completely ignores me this entire game, arriving at some point when he was like level 12 and it was way too late. Shortly after this, we are ganked and I have to use my flash to survive, which is great because I trade flash for flash, I prevent the gank i'm safe for a period of time while the jungle leaves he has no ult because he uses it here this is ideal my ignite's coming back and it's time for what you would think is a gank he's at my tower he's vulnerable no flash no ult i let my teammate my jungler know all of this and no gank as mentioned before so it's on my own back i go for the kill i do everything i possibly can here and unfortunately he just gets away on one hp again and there's not really anything i could do there looking back at it i kind of hit everything i did everything except use my melee e for extra damage but as you can see the transform cooldown was on cooldown for like four seconds so he would have just walked away had i done that so he just gets away on one hp and frankly in this situation when anasis is top your teammates called out he's got no resources and you're not ganking i'm salty about my jungler this game but there's one main thing here that i can take away uh given the situation and something i can blame myself for i have successfully slow pushed and controlled the lane pre-level six and harassed him heavily we barely missed the kill twice which was our big objective pre-level six and we even nearly got him on that post level six but the moment i noticed my jungle is ignoring me that first time and a kill doesn't really look possible anymore after the second time i should be aggressively looking to freeze the wave it's my only hope he's scaling he's post level six i don't have flash i don't have ignite i'm super vulnerable I need to prevent myself from dying, I need to slow his powering up, I need to freeze the wave, and it takes me way too long to even try, and guess what happens? I tried to kill him solo a third time when he's now powered up and got his ult, and I die. And that is 100% my own fault, given the circumstances, given the information I have. Yes, the jungler really let me down, but I knew he was letting me down, so why did I take this third fight? Why was I not freezing? I lose this lane, I lose this skit lane super hard, I lose this game because NASA scales super hard. When I have clear issues and mistakes on my own part, that specific first death right there, then I can blame myself entirely. Yeah, maybe I could have had a better, better jungler, and yeah, maybe my team could have prevented me from inting, basically, but I still made that mistake. And it sucks because I nearly got him twice all on my own, and it would have been great if I did, and the game would have been completely different if I had, but... 
what's in front of me is what's in front of me and reacting to that situation is what I have to do. And it's not about blaming my teammates for my own mistakes. Finally, it's our third match, and this time against the monster that is Mordekaiser. My god, what is this character? In this matchup, I'm completely screwed, or so it feels like. He ignores my poke, harasses me while pushing the wave extremely fast, and he's going to try to take my tower as fast as he can so he can rotate to Drake to ulti it for that big push elsewhere. So, here's my goals. Freeze the wave at the tower to securely farm and prevent him from killing me. Beg for ganks while he's in that horrible position for an extended period of time. And punish his rotates however I can, be that follow him or take the towers. But man, what a monster. He takes control of lane like right off the bat. I can't even compete in this matchup. He has me at my tower straight away and I'm doing my best to freeze the wave outside of the tower but it's just really difficult. Frankly it took me way too long to start avoiding his harass while he hits the wave at the same time as me as I learn this matchup for the first time. I notice my positioning really matters here and I can't just hive in the wave but it takes me too long to acknowledge this. Thankfully, my jungler is much more aware this game as I ping to help me while he sat on my tower. The jungler actually notices and comes for the kill. Or, oh, well, so you'd think. Watch this shit, man. Just, just watch it. I fucking suck, dude. You do? Oh my god. Maybe I could have killed him there by walking up for that final auto, but I was really worried about the minions killing me there, and if I died there with that huge wave going into my tower, I mean, think about the amount of XP and CS I would have lost if I died there. That would have been too much. We keep on holding to this tower for dear life, but it just gets more and more messy as the game goes on. I continue to prevent the waves crashing into tower too hard by trimming the waves as much as possible, attempting goal 1 to freeze. And honestly, it does work out okay, keeping him deep in the lane while I can still farm. And to my great surprise, the hero, our jungler Nunu, returns to gank instead of tilting and ignoring my lane after the first sad death. And I take the all in just as Nunu is coming around the river and Maud goes down, well, eventually. So, we're one assist up, we haven't died, and we've got the, word, the wave froze at our tower. As horrible as this game has felt, it is working, and goal one and two are successful so far. So, with enough time, I could build up my items and become useful in the mid and late game. I just need to keep farming and to not die. Freezing the lane for a very long time, we keep up that farm and stay safe. A few minutes later, we do get another gank after a few assist me pings, but I'm actually just kidding. There's now free top lane. What a counter gank. We saw the echo rotating, so I pulled back pretty hard, but unfortunately, the Nunu did not realize in time. However, I do escape. My poor hero Nunu, man. He's died twice, and I haven't died once yet. We return to lane, and we can see that my mid has rotated up after following Echo up to the top lane. And we do actually manage to secure my first kill. Now, the farm's acceptable. I have one kill, I have one assist. We're kind of clawing our way into this game. But there's nothing I could have done to stop that Freeman rotate cleaning up most of my tower, which is the objective of Mordekaiser to begin his devastating rotates after taking my tower. So, freezing the wave is super important, but at this point, I just have to defend the tower however I can. So we aggressively hold off waves and my tower is standing at the tiniest bit of health and it's followed up by another successful gank by both Nunu and myself who are both much stronger. And this even allows me to snag one plate just as 14 minutes rolls by and grab yet another kill because my jungler returns straight away. Which is, you know, huge credit to my jungler. Without him, I would not have two kills and two assists with no deaths at this point. Now, it is true that I facilitate this by freezing and surviving and following my goals but compare this match to my previous one where I was left alone entirely. This would have been a similar and very entirely different game. Anyway, we return to lane once more, and you think I could win the 1v1 at this point? Well, anyway, I did. 
I was wrong, I died. I managed to put him low maybe two or three times, but he just kept shielding up and healing up from most of my damage. Admittedly, there was a relatively big minion wave hitting me at the same time. I think I could have positioned this bear and made use of my flash. I would argue that he just outplayed me rather than it being Mordekaiser specifically, but I clearly just need more experience against this character. I don't really understand how he can gain so much health and the shielding and the periods at which he can do it. Maybe I need to play him myself or maybe you guys can give me some good advice how to deal with this character because like I say, it feels almost unkillable for such a long period of time. With this failure to fight him and finally falling to the monster, he easily takes my tier 1 tower which was very low and immediately rotates for a fight in mid. Goal 3 is to punish him for his rotates, but in the case of his tower, I have too much to push through and it's nearly full health so I know I'm not going to be very useful in that strategy. I should follow him for the counter gank instead so I run down to mid as quickly as I can and we completely clean up. Maud dies once again and the laning phase is over and I can say technically we've won that lane but man it really doesn't feel like it. What's important is that I delayed his main objective largely and crushed his rotate and I am actually very strong in this game against the rest of his team and we cleaned up the mid and late game for the win relatively easy especially with bot lane being nicely fed too but the problem here is that I required so much from my jungler to prevent me from dying to this mod that the enemy jungler could have been pressuring bot lane all match and well he was. I felt weak to specifically Mordekaiser in that match but no one else so as long as I didn't feed him I could scale very well into the end game but it required the help and attention of both my mid lane and my jungle for the majority of that early game which doesn't feel good. Thanks for watching and listening. I hope this was interesting or useful. Please let me know if you'd like to see more of this style of video. I feel like it could be helpful. But for now, I'm going to follow this video up with a live commentary in another game soon. And maybe I can mix that style in and out with this style of video. Remember to hit like and comment any advice if you have any for the feedback of the video or the matchups themselves. But for now, I will see you next time.